Once physical copies of games go out of production, they obviously get more and more expensive as time goes on, which makes buying digital the next best option if you want to stay out of the slammer. However, with the online stores for the PS3 and Vita being on the chopping block for later this year, the last chance to get some of the more expensive and hard-to-find games at a reasonable price is right now. But seeing as how there's like 8 billion games to choose from and so little monies, picking which games to prioritize can be an ass-hair intimidating. And if that describes you, then sit back in your Sensei Carl's futon and allow me, YouTube sauciest gamer Cameron all one word, to tell you 9 Vita games that are still worth buying while the store is still up and running. But not PS3 games, because no one really cares about those. <laughs> Okay, so whenever I talk about video game collecting, people immediately storm the comments section telling me to quit being a square and just hack my console to get everything for free, and I'm sure this is no exception. Well, I got no beef with hackers outside of that one who leaked pictures of my ass to the entire world, I personally just don't want to hack anything myself outside of mini consoles. I've got my reasons why, but that's a topic for another video, so for now, let's just assume that hacking's off the table when it comes to the Vita. Also, while I'm sure there are a few good PS3 games worth grabbing while you still can, I don't really find that console to be all that interesting to collect for. That's mainly due to all the massive patches and all that, but also because pretty much every notable game was ported over to the PS4 is at least still downloadable on the Xbox One and Series X. The Simpsons Arcade were still up, it'd be an entirely different issue, but what could you do? Licensing issues suck noodles. I guess I should have clarified that I wasn't going to talk about PS3 games a little bit sooner, especially since I wrote this video out beforehand, but I mean, it's not like I put it in the title or anything, so who cares, you bimbo. Also, I'm not going to pretend like I 100 percent it or even played all the games that I'm going to be talking about either, since I doubt very many people have played the entire library. I'm basically just going to tell you which nine games I'm personally going to prioritize getting myself after all the digging I did. And there would have been more games in this video, but a handful of them were taken down a long time ago for whatever reason. Apparently Crisis Core had a pop song in the credits or something, I don't know. Like I said, licensing issues suck noodles. And finally, this isn't necessarily a video on which PSP and Vita games are the best, so if you could still buy it on Steam or other consoles, I just don't see the urgency in prioritizing the Vita versions most of the time. And I also don't see the point in prioritizing games where physical copies are cheaper than digital ones, or if there's still a pretty good chance they're going to port the game to modern consoles someday. So in no particular order, let's start with number one. Persona games. You'd think the Persona game that'd be most worth grabbing would be 4 Golden, since many consider it to be the best game on the Vita, period. But even though it's not a bad idea to pick it up while you still can, given that the game's going for about three times the price online at the time of this recording, the fact is that the game's on Steam right now, and like I've said about 14 times in the past, it's only a matter of time before we see the game on even more platforms than that. However, the other Persona games on the PSP are not only way more expensive than 4 Golden, but they're also a lot more unique as well. You see, 4 Golden's excellent and all that, but outside of a few wackos, most would agree that this is the definitive version of the game in every conceivable way. So copy and pasting it onto modern platforms is a pretty easy process that only takes about 45 seconds, including the lunch break. Persona 3 Portable, on the other hand, though, is the definitive version as far as content goes, but since it was a port-slash-remake of a PS2 game for the PSP, the graphics had to take a noticeable hit. The game still looks great and everything, but if Atlas is going to put it on modern platforms, then they'd probably want to combine all the extras of the PSP version with at least the visuals of the PS2 version. But seeing as how there's content and characters that weren't even in the original version, then Atlas would have to make brand new 3D models altogether. So basically, it'd be a lot more work than just copy and pasting it. And look, I'm sure Atlas probably will do this someday, given how popular the Persona franchise has become as of late, but I've got a feeling that it's probably not going to be quite the same game. So if you really want to play this game and don't feel like spending hundreds of bucks on the physical version, then you should probably get the digital version while you still can. As for the PSP versions, the Personas 1, 2, and 2, 2, though, pretty sure these are the definitive versions like 4 Golden was to where you could just copy and paste them onto modern consoles without a problem. But as we all know, when it comes to the first two Persona games, there's really no telling if Atlas even remembers they exist at this point after ignoring them for so many years. If Atlas ports those games right after I upload this video, though, then, I don't know, pretend like I just said Persona 3 Portable. Number 2. Pretty much any Atlas game in general. Now, could I lump the Persona games in with this one and called it one entry? Well, sure, but I also could have included them all individually and had like 27 games in this video, so how do you like that? I'm sorry I got carried away, and I said things I shouldn't have said, and I deeply apologize. Okay, so to be honest, I've never actually played any of these games myself, and to make matters worse, I don't even know anything about them either. 
But I do know that Atlas loves pumping RPGs out the ass, especially on handhelds where they're developing their own games, or publishing somebody else's anyway. Based on all the ones that I've played thus far on other consoles, they're at worst pretty good, and almost always expensive as hell in the aftermarket. So if you like RPGs, or even just weird games from various other genres, then you should probably think about taking a few leaps of faith on some of these Atlas games. Cause I know that I will, and if not now, then who knows if any of these games are ever gonna see the light of day again. Number 3. Mega Man Remakes To be fair, these PSP remakes of the first Mega Man and Mega Man X games aren't really all that rare or expensive yet. But you know what, seeing as how Capcom never re-released either of these two games again, despite having re-released the originals that they were based on like 47 times, I'd imagine that it'll probably be a long time before that dream ever becomes a reality. And the second you can't buy these games digitally anymore, I think it's only a matter of time before the prices creep up in the aftermarket to where only a guy like old Muskie could afford them. Besides, even though physicals are pretty cheap right now, some of us only have PS Vitas and not PSPs, so, you know, if we don't buy digital then, we're probably never gonna get a chance to play these games. Calling them remakes pretty much sums up what they are, but even though I actually prefer the original Mega Man X for nostalgic reasons, it is still nice to change things up with a fresh coat of paint every now and then. However, Mega Man Powered Up, on the other hand, adds two more bosses that weren't in the original game, and if you ask me, any core Mega Man game that isn't literally Mega Man 1's a win anyway is slice it. Number 4. Oreshka Tainted Bloodlines. That's right, yet another RPG, except this one was actually made by Sony, so I don't know why they never ported it to the best of my knowledge of one Google search. Apparently it's a sequel to a semi-obscure Japanese exclusive PS1 game that had this as the cover, so I suppose there's not a very big market for this one. But apparently the game doesn't have any ties to the original, and it's not like there's any touch controls or anything like that, so what gives Sony? I mean, they even remade the original game for the PSP, but I didn't think I should include that here since it's only in Japanese. And I'm pretty sure Japanese people don't watch my videos anymore after I was banned from the country for recording the Prime Minister and his minions trying to summon Satan through a ritual. But anyway, I just kind of think this game looks pretty cool all, so I'll probably pick it up before the aftermarket realizes it exists and the prices skyrocket. Number 5. Castlevania Dracula X Chronicles this right here is a remake of a Castlevania game called Rondo of Blood that only ever came out in Japan on the PC Engine CD. However, unlike the Mega Man games that were remade for the PSP, the original Rondo of Blood hasn't been ported nearly as many times. And for whatever reason, the remake's kinda just been forgotten about at this point, which I think is a damn shame, because not only does it look pretty cool, but it also comes with the original game in English. Not only that, but it also comes with a PS1 port of Symphony of the Night with extra content that was only exclusive on the Japanese Sega Saturn version of the game. And even if Konami had quit making Bachinko machines for like 5 minutes to port the PSP version of Rondo of Blood, it'd still take a real Christmas miracle for them to leave the extra games in the package in a world full of digital games. So if you ask me, Dracula Chronicles X is a must-have for any PSP or Vita owner. Number 6. Silent Hill Book of Memories Much to DJ's chagrin, I've never actually played a Silent Hill game once in my life despite being a massive Resident Evil fan. There's no real reason why I haven't played one, I just kinda haven't gotten around to it, you know? You know what, what better way is there for me to get into the series than a spin-off dungeon crawler that doesn't play anything like the mainline games, am I right? Man, the game did get a pretty mixed reception, apparently you'll either love it or hate it, but I do like horror-based games regardless of whether or not they're scary, so you know what, I bet I'd probably have some fun with this. Number 7. Tearaway Sure, Tearaway may have been remade for the PS4, but this friggin' game takes full advantage of all the Vita's gimmicks in ways that look pretty friggin' awesome. Yeah, I know that the PS5's got a touchpad on the controller, but it doesn't have a camera, so haha. And given that the game's going more for style than realism, it's not like it could really look all that much better off of the Vita anyway. Currently, the game's cheaper in the aftermarket than it is on the PSN, so I wasn't originally gonna put it on this list, but if you're like me and bought the biggest Vita storage possible, then it'd gotta be a bigger waste of money to not take advantage of it, even if it means spending a little more in one game. Now, do I actually mean that? Of course not, I'm buying it physical, but I just thought this game looked really awesome and I really wanted to talk about it. So, if you're gonna call me out for putting this game on the list even though it's cheaper in the aftermarket, then... You know, just don't. Cause I mean, I'm kinda demotivated by the haters, man. I can't succeed unless everyone's constantly praising me, alright? Number 8. Little Big Planet Vita. Little Big Planet games are pretty self-explanatory, and based on everything that I've played at this game so far, it's pretty much what you'd expect. So if you hate Little Big Planet, then this one's probably not going to change your mind, but since the game's got a lot of features specifically catered to the Vita like the touch controls, then I don't think Sony's in any rush to bring it over to the PS5 anytime soon. 
I mean, I'm sure they could probably find a way to make it work on the PS5 controller, but it does still throw a monkey wrench into things. Thankfully, I got this for free all the way back when the PSN was hacked, probably by the same people who are calling me an idiot in the comments for not hacking my Vita. But if you own a PS Vita, then this game really is a must-have, so if for some reason you can't find a physical copy out in the wild at a reasonable price, then you should definitely get the digital version while you still can. Or, you know, you could just get the game through hacking like I did. All you gotta do is hack the PSN and get Sony to give everyone download codes again. It's easy as pie if you got a Dell. Number 9. Touch My Katamari. Okay, so I know the saying the title of the game to the wrong person could land you on the sex offender registry, but Katamari games are just plain neat, at least in my opinion, anyway. You start off with a tiny ball of Katamari and roll it around these crazy-ass worlds to get it as big as possible, and all kinds of hilarity ensues along the way. Apparently, this game relies on touch controls a little too much to report it to modern consoles and be a little bit of a hassle. I mean, sure, the Switch has touch controls, but most people don't care too much for the games that you can't play in dock mode. But I mean, updating the game to where you don't need touch controls would still be a lot easier than creating a brand new one from scratch, so it won't surprise me to see this on the Switch within like five minutes after I post this video, and I really hope that ends up being the case. But anyway, that's my list. I'm sure a lot of people are probably having a meltdown because I left Uncharted Golden Abyss off the list, but I mean, it's a friggin' Uncharted game. I'm sure it's gonna be on the PS5 at some point, right? But then again, I guess you could say the same thing about Little Big Planet. <laughs> Alright, so fine. I actually found this game on the ground one time and sold it for like 13 bucks on eBay because I didn't have a Vita at the time. So honestly, I kinda just don't feel like buying it again, seeing as I'm definitely gonna have to pay more than 13 bucks this time around. And I'm not kidding, that actually did happen. But anyway, that's all for today, though. If you liked this video, then you should check out my video about Atlas telling me to destroy my broken Persona Q cartridge for a download code. You'll excuse me, though. I gotta go pick my dad up from the gynecologist's office right about now. Later! So I want to say thank you to your loyalty. Thank you for your support.